I mean, I think Seattle blew the game. I think Seattle was well in control of the game. They were up 30 to 16 late in the second half, and they just let it slip. And it's like you mentioned, they let Derrick Henry just pop off on them. And that's the thing is, look, Derrick Henry is one of the most powerful backs that this generation has to offer. And if he's able to exploit any defensive weaknesses that a team has, he is going to do it. And he's going to destroy you if you have those weaknesses. And he popped off today. He had over 180 yards rushing, had three touchdowns, and was solely responsible, at least, maybe not solely, but he was a huge factor in the comeback against Seattle on the road. So when I look at the Titans, you know, the Titans, they got their, they got their shit rocked in week one. They bounced back in a huge way on the road against a really good Seattle team. And to me, they showed, you know, some grit and determination. It wasn't working out in the first two and a half, three quarters, but they were able to turn it around and make it count when it mattered the most. And they got the game winning field goal in overtime. So, you know, a 17 point swing in the latter stages of the second half on the road is not easy, but the Titans were able to make it happen. I thought Ryan Tannenhill was relatively solid today. Didn't get any touchdowns. That was all really kind of Derrick Henry's doing, but Ryan Tannenhill wasn't the reason why they didn't have a shot to win this game. He kept them in it, didn't make any mistakes and just let Derrick Henry pound the rock. Now I got to kick it to Seattle. Look, Seattle's main issue this year is their defense. Their offense will be able to score. But defensively, they gave up 33 points. You know, and up until the second half, they were doing relatively fine, and then they just let Derrick Henry run all over them. So, granted, it's week two. I'm not going to put too much of a focus on Seattle being in trouble or anything like that. But it is somewhat of a cause of concern that you gave up a 14 point lead in the second half at home to a team that is relatively solid in the Tennessee Titans. They had a pretty decent run at the playoffs last year, but I am kind of surprised that Russell and the offense only were able to put up six points in the second half. They got to, they got to be better than that. So, you know, by and large, I think Seattle will be able to, to bounce back from this. So hopefully they're able to kind of correct the mistakes that they had against Tennessee in this game. But Hey, I got to give Tennessee credit. Tennessee was able to bounce back in a huge way. And instead of being down Oh two, they're one and one going into week three and it's well-deserved. So it was a great game. It was one of the better games that, that week two had to offer. And, you know, I still think that both of these teams by and large are going to be pretty competitive in their respective divisions. As far as I'm concerned. Yeah, no, uh, for sure. Uh, I definitely will agree to a certain extent. Uh, I believe that the Tennessee Titans are better than what they are appearing to be last week. They had a very off week and they just got just completely obliterated off the face of the planet by Kyler Murray. But they showed resilience. They showed toughness. They showed what they were about. And obviously that is getting Derrick Henry the rock. Ryan Tannehill going for 347 yards was great. He played efficient football. Obviously, we don't expect him to go out there and make big plays like a Patrick Mahomes, like a Lamar Jackson or anything of that nature. But there was a Julio Jones sighting today, which is good news for them. Six receptions for 128 yards, a 51-yard reception to cap it off. Uh, so it did look like their offense in the air was able to step it up, and Julio Jones was able to get into a rhythm, which is going to be crucial for them going forward down the stretch. They did uh, go out and acquire him for this particular reason. And if you have Julio Jones and Derrick Henry and eventually A.J. Brown kind of popping off, I don't see a lot of people being able to stop this offense. The problem is the defense, similar to Seattle. I'm going to transition on to that team as well. Obviously, Russell going for 343, two tuts, and just doing his thing on the ground to kind of keep plays alive. He was sacked a couple of times, but his passer rating of 128 was just incredible obviously throwing over or completing over 60 percent of his passes i think that the main issue is going to be here is going to be their consistency at running the football seattle was only able to put the ball on the ground 18 times for 77 yards not too good they averaged as a team 4.3 yards per carry but it isn't anything that's going to kind of 
jump out at me considering Chris Carson had two touchdowns on two of those carries. And Alex Collins had one rush for 25 yards, so that average is a little inflated. Overall, I do think this was an incredible game. But like Kyle said, the Seahawks straight up just blew it, man. Their defense could not contain Derrick Henry, and that offense was in a, unable to really put anything on the board or really get anything going. Tyler Lockett had an incredible game, obviously going for 178 and a touchdown. Uh, Freddie Swan got open, the former uh, University of Florida receiver, with a 68-yard touchdown. So they're able to score at will for the most part in terms of Seattle, but the fact that they went cold so quick is a little bit of a concern to me. They're already struggling to stop people on the defensive side of the ball, but when you get that ball back and you can't put points up yourself – if you're going to continue to get into these shootouts, you better accept that your defense is horrible and you get you have to get into that mindset of we need to score every possession in order to win games. You play in the NFC West, so you already know it's going to be competitive every single game. If I'm not mistaken, everybody in the NFC West outside of Seattle is 2-0. The Cardinals won today, the 49ers won today, and obviously the Rams also won today. So the Seahawks are already a game behind the eight ball. It's not good when you blow a lead at home to an, uh, to an out-of-conference rival or an out-of-conference team. And it gives Tennessee momentum going into the game with Indianapolis next week. So, you know, there's pros and cons to this game. But I definitely think the main headline to this game was Seattle kind of choked. And uh, Tennessee ran away with it. And they didn't want – they smelled blood in the water. They didn't want to give that ball back.